Bonjour everyone and welcome back to my channel The Waves of Your Soul. My name is Marine, I am a French tarot reader. Today's video is all about sharing with you all my August 2021 favorites. We're going to be talking about tarot, oracle, books, lifestyle stuff, everything that I've been enjoying using in the months of August. This is just a nice chat with friends. I've been doing this series now for the last three months and I've been really enjoying it. Thank you so much for the kind comments, the support, the continuing people, you know, subscribing, everything like that. It really means the world to me and I'm so grateful for every single one of you. I usually divide those videos around different categories, so if you're just here to see um, Tarot and Oracle decks, you can jump to that because I leave timestamps in the description box below. But if you want to hear all the other things that I've been enjoying, then you're very welcome too. So if it is your first time here, I want to say a huge welcome. My name is Maureen. I am a lover of everything Tarot, Oracle and self-empowerment related. So if you'd like to see any more of those things on your timeline, as well as pick a card reading, empowering tarot readings, content where I talk about oracle decks, tarot decks, all of that good stuff, then make sure to hit the subscribe button because I upload every single week. So the month of August has been an interesting month for me. We are back in lockdown where I live. It is what it is, but it just means that obviously everyone has had to readjust with their lifestyle. It definitely means that I had more time to spend exploring some tarot decks and some oracle decks because we couldn't really be doing anything else. Not that I knew much else, <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean. So this was why I have a little bit more tarot and oracle decks to talk about this month. But I hope you'll enjoy it regardless. Okay, so let's start with books. So I actually haven't really finished any book in the month of August in terms of proper book. And I think that's because of lockdown. I mean, let's be honest, sometimes we're in the headspace to really get our teeth in and study new things, especially when it comes to tarot or new divination system, etc. And sometimes we just don't have the headspace for it. I just couldn't really commit to one book, which means that I've started a lot and I haven't finished any, <laughs> which is very typical of me as an Aries. I will say we are aware, very well known to be able to start things, not very so good at finishing things. So I don't want to talk about something I haven't actually finished. I do want to talk about two tarot guidebooks that I've been really loving though and have really kept me through during this lockdown situation and before anyway, just life situations in general. And the first one is the Dark Goddess Tarot. And of course, um, this is the guidebook that comes with the Dark Goddess Tarot. This is a mass market tarot deck. This was originally a indie deck by Ellen Lorenzi Prince. It was picked up by, I think it was Schiffer or Red Feather, one of those, and released it last year. The tarot in itself is wonderful goddess deck. I really like this artwork and every single card is a different goddess. You know, I love that and it's very powerful imagery already. We love that, but the true gem of this tarot for me, on the cards, and this is why I bought the deck, not for the card, but for the guidebooks. There are a few decks like that where the guidebook for me is equal to even sometimes better than the cards, and this is one of them. They take the whole tarot reading to a whole new level. This is why I feel a bit sad sometimes when I hear people uh, you know, mentioned that they don't like reading the guidebook at all and that they'd rather read their tarot deck intuitively because even though I totally agree that intuition is super important, some decks have guidebooks that are just beyond amazing and this is one of them and this is for me, the guidebook makes the deck worth it. So this has been amazing, I can't recommend it enough. Um, the guidebook is actually in color and so on each of the page you get the picture of the card and then you'll get an um, description of who that goddess is. She uses goddesses from all sorts of different mythology. Of course you'll have your basics like Greek mythology, um, Celtic mythology, you know the one that we see fairly often, but there's also some inspired by African spirituality, by Japanese uh, mythology. There's like um, Hindu goddesses in there, so in terms of diversity and different cultures, different mythology, this is it for me in terms of a goddess tarot deck like I have every one I want in there and even some I never heard of which I is great because I really love learning which of the card you get the image of the goddess an explanation of who you know the goddess is and then you get a message directly from uh, Ellen Lorenzi Prince and 
Oh boy, those messages are powerful, honestly. And they don't actually fit very much with traditional tarot meanings. So this book, if you're a beginner in tarot and you're trying to learn tarot, don't get this book. You get so confused because it doesn't really follow, even though it does follow, you know, there's like the major arcana and then there's four suits, etc. It just does its own thing in the sense that the meanings go beyond the traditional arcana, etc. If you're interested in learning about mythology, especially, you know, divine feminine from different cultures, as well as a deck that will challenge you um, emotionally, spiritually, you know, make you look at your ish, but also have really gentle messages. The messages from Ellen Lorenzi Prince, they are just so good. So I've been using that. Pretty much just drawing a card at night and reading the message or sometimes I'll just do bibliomancy like I'll you know open the book and sometimes I'll even read like two sentences and it's exactly what I need that day or um, I have done bigger like new moon and full moon spreads with this um, but they take me a long time to analyze because there is so much in there that usually I need to let that reading sit for a few days, journal about it etc. It's a whole process. I do a lot with this and this has been one of honestly my favorite book of the month for sure even though it's a tarot guide book and I highly highly recommend it. I had already talked about this deck in my top decks of 2020 video I think and it's you know still proven to be a very good purchase because six months on I'm still loving that. Other book I've been loving is also actually another tarot guide book and it is the Wild Messengers Alchemical Tarot Guidebook. So this is the book that comes with the Wild Messengers Tarot, which is an independently published tarot deck. And again, this is one of those where the deck is nice, the book is the bomb. Do you need the deck? No, you don't. Do you need the book? You don't need it, but you sure will be happy once you have it. <laughs> if you were to spend your hard earned money, I would say potentially and this is, has never happened to me before, potentially skip out on the tarot deck because you don't you, don't, you can buy them separately and get the guidebook because the tarot deck is expensive. It's an indie deck, it's not cheap. And the guidebook is pricey as well, but you can see it's chunky. And honestly, sometimes I use the guidebook without the tarot deck and guess what, it's fine. I haven't had any tarot gods strike me with lightning, so... <laughs> Actual cards are very beautiful. It's all watercolor paintings. So, um, you know, every single card is a different animal and every single um, suit is sorted by elements. So you'll have your fire, water, air and um, earth. Only way to recognize minor and major arcana is because you have the element here on the suit. All of the court cards have been renamed. And you know I have a very strong opinion about that. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like when court cards are renamed to a point where it's like confusing because I'm lazy. I don't like to spend five, like five minutes trying to go through the guard book and figure out if it's the seeker is the page or the knight. And I know you could get used to it eventually the more you use it, but I have short time memory and I tend to forget after a while. So I have to be reminded over and over. And like I said, I'm lazy. So that's one thing I don't like about the deck, as well as the fact that most of the major arcanas have been renamed. And so again, I find that quite confusing because you're like, okay, what were you trying to tell us? Like this is shift. And shift is the hangman. Uh, I got this bundle in a set though. And so at the time there was a sale on or whatever. I've had this deck for over a year, I think. So I didn't pay full price for it at the time. Like I said, there was some kind of sale. The deck is beautiful and you know, you do what you want with your money, but I don't believe that this is what makes this tower deck amazing. What makes this deck amazing is actually the guidebook and that has been my favorite book of the month along with the dark mode this tarot first of all can we talk about this holographic joy like take me to space so this guidebook is really for me the gem if you want to get a guidebook that is going to be about tarot about animal medicine about alchemy about spirituality about shadow work and even self-exploration and even more this is it each of the animal you're going to get a explanation of what the card is you get an invocation 
or like a short mantra, you get a message directly as if the animal is speaking to you. And for the major arcana, you even on top of that get journaling prompts, rituals, meditation, um, visualization exercises. Like there is so much packed in this book. There's actually, because this deck is also based on alchemical process, there is a whole chapter at the end of the guidebook where it takes you through everything that alchemy is about, especially if you didn't know much about alchemy. Like I, you know, I'm, I'm learning, I'm, I'm not very pro at um, alchemy, etc. So I found this deck so interesting for me to help me understand a little bit more about how you can tie alchemy with personal development, spirituality, etc. Really good bibliography at the end of the book. I don't judge a book by its cover, but I do judge a book by its bibliography. So. Finally, there are a ton of good spread in this guidebook as well. I highly, highly recommend you, if you're in search of a book that's gonna push your mental blockages, that's gonna help you go deeper in your spirituality, rooted in animal medicine, but it doesn't claim to be druid craft or witchcraft or anything like that. It stay, it like it, it kind of goes above any kind of labels, which I also really appreciate. This is the one, for sure. So if you watch any of my previous favorite video, you know I love watching TV shows. So the TV program I wanted to talk about that I've really enjoyed in the month of August is called Glow Up. So this is a makeup competition TV show that you can find on Netflix. So this has been going on for three years now. We've just passed the third season. And this is a makeup artist competition for people who do not just like pretty makeup, you know, like every day, photo shoot like fashion etc but they also do film makeups so they have to do challenges around being on set for certain tv shows and my favorite part is also that every week they're given creative briefs where they have to do creative makeups based on different themes such as the cosmos nature mythology or history part of the tv show every single week where they do creative makeup is mind-blowing it is based in london so all the contestants are british which i love you know i lived in london for nine years london has my heart also have this kind of nostalgia every time i watch something that is based in england you know my heart melts a little because i have such a strong connection with england and london especially so that's also nice to see, you know, them uh, going on shoots in different locations. The main key, like, attraction of the show for me is watching talented young people create beautiful makeup that looks like art. Honestly, they are so talented that they can use people's faces as canvas to take you to a whole other world. And it is so beautiful to watch, so fascinating. If you enjoy watching people who are creative, who are inspiring, who can tell their story through the mean of artwork, in this case makeup, and I think you'd really enjoy this this program. It's on Netflix and I think it's been released globally, so now it's easy for everyone to watch it. I recommend it. It's a joy to watch and super inspiring. The other thing I've been loving this month is of course RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star. I watch pretty much every single episode of every single season of RuPaul's Drag Race, whether it's the Down Under one, whether it's the UK version, whether it's the American version. At this rate, I'm just like, give it everything to me. I feel like RuPaul is just gonna be like, taking over the world, this is gonna be like drag queen domination and honestly I am here for it. Think how the world is going down now, I feel like a drag queen domination would actually improve the world. Like Everyone would feel accepted because this is like a judgment free zone where everyone gets to be their true self. Plus there would be unlimited supply of makeup glitter and you know sass, which I'm super here for. So. I'm actually super ready for drag queen domination <laughs> and I would actually vote for him for president. So of course I've been enjoying All Stars. This is actually season 6 I think and it's been a really good season. Of course if you enjoy Drag Race you probably are watching All Star and that's definitely been a highlight for me, especially during lockdown. There is nothing better than knowing that every Thursday you're gonna be able to watch drag queens live their best life, put on beautiful outfits, read themselves to filth and just be amazing so that also always makes me happy actually the episode that is called the game within a game where it was just lip sync the bomb <laughs> honestly i won't say too much but crunch crunch munch munch 
if you know you know. Okay, so let's move on to makeup. I didn't mention any makeup bits in my last favorites, but this month's being in lockdown, I had a little bit more time to play with my makeup, discovered a new indie brand that I am so in love with. I actually really enjoy wearing makeup, but I also really enjoy supporting small indie brands, just like I do with my tarot decks, really. If I can buy directly from indie creators rather than from big corporation, then I'm gonna try and do that. This particular indie brand is not a bit small though. <laughs> it's actually very famous. I'm just very late to the game. I am so behind on the bandwagon, but you know, I'm glad I finally joined and got my ticket. So, so Kaleidos is an indie brand. I believe it's a mix between Chinese and American brand and honestly such good quality. So I have two eyeshadow palettes here to show. First of all, the packaging is like, so cute look at this so those are their eyeshadow palettes i mean they have a few but this is one of the formats that they offer this is a more purple lilac moment and then when you open faced with this beautiful how many shades is that six pen which is perfect for traveling is not gonna happen anytime soon <laughs> for me i'm ready whenever i can travel I'll have my palette that I can fit in a little bag, so I'm here for that. So this um, is one of the palettes I got, beautiful eyeshadows, they do have the honestly one of the best formulas I've tried, whether it's for shimmer or for matte, it is amazing. Even the names are super cute, like this is called Lunar Lavender and the one I just showed you is called Sashimi City. Some of those eyeshadows are actually duochromes, so they'll go from like blue to purple, another one is like pink to purple, and in the other one um, their shimmers are like pink to gold or peach to gold etc. Also the fact that they offer smaller um, eye palette is super cool for me. I really enjoy this, they have fantastic bigger eyeshadow palettes as well which are really like giving me envy so I might, you know, now that I've tried it and I know that it's super amazing quality matte or shimmer, I might give it a go. So um, I also got their, one of their highlighters, Cosmos vibe for their highlighters. So this is called Ray Rider. I'm wearing it on my cheeks today. You can't actually see how bright it is, I think, because of the way I'm filming. But in daylight, I am literally glowing that you could see me from space. Beam me out of here. <laughs> I'm waiting for Alien Rescue. Super impressed with Kaleidos makeup. I'll definitely be checking out what they do more regularly. If you enjoy very good quality eyeshadows, super colorful makeup, very unusual color story, super interesting packaging. Honestly, they are killing it. I would highly recommend. Okay, it is time for our favorite category, favorite part of the video. Oracle and Tarot deck. Ah, oh, the crowd goes wild. I really need to speak to some people, can you tell? This lockdown has been doing really bad things for my social skills. Anyway, so let's start with Oracle decks. Three Oracle decks and two Tarot decks to talk about this month. So I actually have received quite a lot of Tarot decks in the month of August. Um, I have filmed a Tarot deck haul, which I don't know which order you'll see that. So I might, I might have posted that before you're seeing this video, which is gonna show some of the new decks I got. And then after I filmed the whole, another few decks arrive. And this is not because I went ham on my debit card, okay? This is because I am getting still a shit ton of decks that I ordered last year that I thought were lost and they're starting to appear. A lot of them just literally have a year delay. But you know what? It, they're arriving, so I'm fine with that. But because they arrived in the month of August, they, I didn't get to go fully in depth with them. I like to talk about them once I've reviewed them because otherwise I'm like, you can just watch an unboxing. If you want first impressions, there are plenty of people who give you first impressions. I like to talk about things that I have tried, that I have used. And so this is why I received a lot of texts. My picks for this month are still quite small because they are the decks that I have truly and really um, got to know amongst new things. Let's start with Star Dragon Oracle cards. This was a surprise. I think I ordered it in May and I got it beginning of August. So for my standards, this is like express shipping. <laughs> and this is a Los Carabeo Oracle deck, uh, all about dragons. This is a Paolo Barbieri deck. I don't really remember why I ordered this deck, apart from the fact that I love dragons and that I don't have any dragon decks. And I do really love dragons, like some people are very into unicorns, 
I'm very into dragons and I didn't have a dragon deck but and then I saw this one and I hadn't even seen like really all the cards but something appealed to me so here are the backs why I'm saying I don't really know why I bought this deck is because normally there's something about this deck that would make me go like uh uh no no sir I don't think so and it's the fact that it has only 33 cards like why why are you only giving me 33 especially when the artwork is so beautiful like I want more I'm a greedy bitch from 40 now I'm considering this is like oracle size. 33 I'm like why are you so stingy though? However I'm actually really glad I bought it anyway. This artwork makes my fantasy lover's heart beat. It is beautiful. The colors are stunning. The artwork is insane and on, what I really like is the combination that of dragons and the fact that on every single card there is actually a being whether it's a fairy or a human or we don't, we're not quite sure and actually this being is linked to a constellation this is why it's called star dragon so every dragon is linked to a constellation or star and so in the guidebook for every single card you're gonna get two messages one message from the star constellation and one message from the dragon and so the star message is oftentimes more soothing and then the dragon side is like burn this shit up and be done with it <laughs> So I appreciate the balance because if you watch any of my videos, you know, I always go on about the fact that I like balance in my Oracle decks as well. On the cards, you get two keywords. Mostly I've just been going off of the globality of it and those two messages combined really are amazing. In every single card, you will see a constellation and it tells you a little bit in the guidebook about which constellation was chosen. So here, for example, you can see the constellation is right there and you see this green middle here. There are some cards that have a green center and some cards that have a red center. The green center will be the general oracle cards, like the one that have, you know, the dragons on them and that have the very beautiful artwork. And there's like five cards with red backings that are actually more like majors. They kind of function as major arcana and they have different themes. So we, and you can see the artwork is very different because it more looks like a draft, like it's not colored. So they're easily recognizable. You have five of them and they correspond to different themes such as inspiration, time, space, resources, and the last one is knowledge. And you can use those to set the intention for your readings. If you pick the resources, it's like what might help me feel more nourished. So it could be used to give structure around your reading, which I appreciate, gives you an incentive around what is the theme of the reading you need to know. Because sometimes we feel a certain type of way, but we don't know why we feel that sort of type of way. And it can be a bit confusing because we know we're feeling something, but we don't know what it's linked to. <laughs> and so if you wanted to, you could always just mix them in and use them as regular Oracle card as well. You do you. I appreciate the structure. I appreciate the artwork. I appreciate the keywords. Overall, this deck for me has everything I want. I just wish there was more cards. Okay, so let's move on to another new Oracle deck in my collection. This is actually a French Oracle deck. It is called L'Oracle à Haute Vibration by Jenna Blossoms and the illustrations are by Clémentine Rocheron. So this is mass market French tech. You can find it on Amazon France or any kind of website that sells French decks. Usually it's Amazon.fr and this is a really cute oracle deck. Already was edged in this really beautiful kind of peachy metallic color. It actually matches my eyeshadow. That is cute. I am here for this moment right there. This is what I live for. Cute decks, cute makeup, like my day made. usually like to talk about French decks on my channel because you know I'm French, I like to rap the French people. <laughs> <laughs> like to push us out into the world like consume French things we're good for other things not just like red wine and bread and cheese and saucisson although you know all of those things are fantastic we also make really cute decks apparently so this is actually a very self-love self-care very high vibe kind of deck the name of the deck is actually L'Oracle des Hautes Vibrations, which literally means the high vibe deck. So the concept is lots of little activities that you could do to raise your vibration, which I feel like we all need, right? I mean, I definitely need a reminder sometimes. So um, I think the artwork is stunning and this is why I wanted to mention it today, because I think that even if you don't speak French, you could totally appreciate the artwork and it's very 
intuitive. Like you could read this deck without really reading the keyword, especially because the keyword is so small that I don't think it's intrusive. But also, of course, if you want it to translate, it comes with a really cute guidebook. Every single card has a message, not too much, just very straightforward pointers. But I feel like the images are very intuitive and straightforward. And I love this artwork. I love that it's a mix between modern life, but the color scheme really is very dreamlike burst of colors lots of pink purple like i just really think the artwork is so nice paired it with the modern witch tarot that was a match made in heaven the groovy weight was also really cute like you know any of your very colorful or fun tarot decks also any modern deck i feel like that would look so nice with it also comes with um, a separate part of cards which are actually a lot more abstract so here is an example for example here is an example for example <sighs> welcome to marine's english lessons <laughs> here is an example of the abstract card as you can see they look like watercolor colorful paint all being mixed in so the, this was the blue one was sweetness uh, this is strength and this is love. I think you have like 10 or so cards around emotions like this and again they can be used to set the reading so before you pull the regular cards you pull one of those cards to figure out what is the emotion or you need to work on or you can mix them in with the deck or you can use them as altar spots to like invoke that emotion if you're doing any kind of magic or anything like that. A real joy to work with. I highly recommend it. I don't believe it was super expensive. Um, 24 euros it says on the box. I find that if you're especially pulling cards for people who are a little bit scared of anything is a too esoteric but are interested into spirituality is a great one i also think this could be good for younger young adults or teenagers um because it there are no cards that are threatening or anything like that okay so let's move on to my next oracle deck this is actually a deck i've had for a few months and I have revisited this month and I still love it as much as when I got it. This was actually a gift from my wonderful friend Tanya. She gifted me this for my birthday uh, in March and I've been using it consistently and fell really back in love with it in the month of August. I used it pretty much every day and it's called Fantastic Beings and it is a indie oracle deck by Avec La Vie. So the name of the artist is Rebecca Lefebvre and like I said this is an indie oracle deck. So I have the mini version. She has three oracle decks out. She has one with fantastic beings which is the one I have. She has one with animals and one with plant and you can get them in normal size or mini size which is what I have. First off let's talk about the touch experience of this deck. Oh my god, so I am not one to be what they call a cardstock snob. I actually don't really care about cardstock. I will take shitty cardstock if the artwork is delightful. <laughs> For me that's more important. As long as it's not so thin that it's gonna disintegrate if I try to shuffle it, I'm okay. It feels like it's printed on art paper, like very high quality, thick watercolor paper. A lot of texture and it's not laminated and i never thought i needed non-laminating cards in my life but i really do so i'm gonna try and show you hopefully you can see the texture right there yeah i think you can look at this wonderful texture because of the cardstock and the fact that it's not laminating the shuffling is actually so satisfying like honestly this is a full-on experience the main beauty about this deck and again thank you tanya for this lovely wonderful gift is the fact that um, every fantastic being portrayed on the card are actually partly portrayed so you don't see fully what you're looking at like you can see this is part of a tree but you're not really sure which one but then when you turn it around it's actually called the dragon blood tree and as you can see the back of the cards you get the name of the fantastic being and sometimes they can be animals mythological creatures or even plants but they all have a fantastical side in this case and they'll all have a keyword and they'll have a very cool message now the fantastic beings is actually all about manifestation so every single one of her decks are gonna be based around different theme for the fantastic being it's all about manifestation so every single message is gonna be tailored to help you 
work on your goals, to help you live your best life. Here we have the phoenix, but you can see how you're only seeing just part of this. I love that. When you're doing intuitive readings, just pulling the card I think can be super cool. Um, and of course the messages on the back are fantastic. Every single time I have used the deck for myself or for others it always rings true. But on top of that I've really been enjoying using this deck for my pick a card because I think that picking an, a visual other than the back of the card can be really cool and so I've enjoyed doing that. I'm gonna use that even more so in my future pick a card readings. And if you didn't know I do regular pick a card readings, powering tower readings, my vibe is to mostly do tarot readings on the theme of self-empowerment, improving your life, overcoming emotional blockages, um, you know, shadow work, things like that. So that's kind of what I enjoy doing my readings on. And so if you want to see any of the decks I mentioned today in action, then subscribe to my channel and watch out for any of my readings that I do either for the collective or pick a card reading, etc. Most likely I will be using my decks for, you know, not just for myself, I'll also be using them for my YouTube videos. So this is usually the place you want to go to if you see the decks in action and see how they read. Let's move on to our favorite category, most likely. I mean, it's my favorite category. Chances are, if you're here, it might be your favorite category too. And it is tarot decks. So like I said, I have received quite a few, but I haven't actually had the time to fully explore them because I like to take my time. I don't like to rush things, you know, we need to get to know each other and all of that. So I didn't want to talk about stuff that I received just because it's new and be like, oh, this is amazing when I actually haven't really tried it, tried it. But those two, I have spent most of my months of August so using and they are the bomb that come <laughs> and they're like opposites. So this is where you realize that my taste spectrum is very large. I guess it means that you get to see things that are very different and so hopefully that makes the videos more interesting as well rather than if I just had like one specific taste in decks. So the first thing I want to mention is actually a deck that has been around for decades and it is the Handsome Roberts Tarot by Mary Hanson Roberts. Uh, this is a deck that has been around since the 70s I believe and so for me it falls in the categories of those decks that are classics that have been around for a long time and that is what makes them special. In that category we have of course the RWS and the Tarot de Marseille which are much older but in that more 70s vibe you'd have the Aquarian Tarot, you have the Morgan Greer Tarot, you have this you have the Morgan's Tarot, which is not a tarot, it's an oracle, but it's hysterical, one of my favorite decks. Um, there's quite a few from that time, I think. Well, not that, not that many, but they are all interesting. And I have a real soft spot for those, apart from the Morgan Greer Tarot, which for some reason I love the artwork, but I never could like vibe with it. I don't know what it was, but I owned it and I had to pass it on because it was not for me. The Aquarian Tarot is one of my favorite decks and this Hanson Robert Tarot is quickly becoming another favorite. So as you can see, this is a smaller than average tarot deck, like it does fit in your hands very easily. So if you have small hands, which I don't, or if you have any arthritis pain in your hands, then this could be a good uh, deck for you because it's easier to shuffle. And so um, I really have loved this little deck. So like I said, I have a real soft spot for decks that have been around for a few decades. Another one of my favorites is the Cosmic Tarot. I love that one. I think there's something to be said about decks that have been around for a long time because for me, it means that energetically speaking, they have done so many readings that they have gathered a lot of energy around them and it's like because so many people have used them over and over their egregore is like interesting and I love tapping into that when I use those older decks because for me whether it's the Aquarian, the Cosmic Tarot or in this case this one every time I use them it's like I don't even have to try to figure out what the message is. It is so clear. It sings so clearly. For me, it reads beautifully. As you can see, the imagery is inspired by fairy tale, kind of like fairy tale books, etc. Scroll here, there's a name of the card and it has it in different languages. So this is RWS inspired, 
but Mary kind of did her own thing as well, for example by including a Merlin figure or a mage in the Seven of Cups and all her little additions I think are inspired. She's so cool, I love her bunny, I love her hair, the colors are beautiful. Honestly this is a really good deck because it's an older deck unfortunately the diversity is pretty non-existent which is one of the things that if I could change I would totally change. Um, unfortunately I guess back in the day they didn't really represent the world as it should be and so that's something that I don't love about the deck but I can kind of take it at face value because it is older if nowadays a deck was to come out and look like this I would be like no this is not good enough however in terms of tower deck to read with I think this is a powerful clear concise straight to the point on par for me with my aquarium tarot the fact that it's a small size i think i also really enjoy it i didn't even realize it was smaller but it doesn't even come with a bigger size this is just the size of the deck like it doesn't have a mini or whatever this is just it i think it's really cool oldie but goodie that i definitely have a soft spot for especially when i'm feeling a bit confused and i just need clear answers those are usually the decks i tend to go to okay let's move on to my last deck oh boy is it beautiful <laughs> the lubenko tarot by emily lubenko so this is a kickstarter that i backed i think in 2020 I'd say a good year ago um, you know how it is with kickstarter you back something and then maybe you're gonna get it maybe you're not gonna get it maybe you're gonna get it in two years time it's kind of like russian roulette right let's be real kickstarter is amazing for backing independent creators i think most of all i've backed a few decks on kickstarter now uh, i've had wonderful experience this one took its its time but the quality is amazing you know, we had regular updates i also live in the middle of nowhere which doesn't help with me getting my decks i've noticed that people got their decks way before me i've also had some terrible experiences on on kickstarter not as bad as some people but still pretty bad the kind of bad where you don't have updates for like six months to nine months and you're like hello are you still alive like what is going on so me and kickstarter have a tumultuous relationship i said i would never back a kickstarter deck again because i'm kind of sick of having decks floating around in the universe somewhere that i know might take another year to get to me and the fact that i live in the middle of nowhere right now doesn't really help that but at the same time i also just backed a deck on the kickstarter yesterday <laughs> because <laughs> One of my favorite creator um, just released a Kickstarter and she created the Solara Oculto Tarot, which for me is my unicorn deck, like the deck that got away. And then she just pushed out a Kickstarter like two days ago or a few days ago, I don't know, a few, like maybe a week ago when I realized that I had to back it. So I guess I haven't made up my mind yet. I guess I am done with Kickstarters unless one creator that I really love and want to support bring that something you know i'm just in a phase where i feel like i need to put kickstarter on hold i'm still waiting for four decks from kickstarter obviously one i just recently backed but three of them are from 2020 and i still haven't received those so you know patience the Lubenko Tarot was actually a very nice Kickstarter. I'm so glad I backed it. Honestly, I think she's now ready to release this deck um, on her Etsy shop or soon to be. So check it out because I'll put a link to her Instagram or something below. Fantasy lover like me, then you're gonna love it. Fantasy inspired, but fantasy with a bit of a dark twist, I will say, uh, which I'm super here for. The back of the deck said that it's actually a tarot deck exploring the surreal, the intense, the queer, and the divine. And I feel like this is a perfect summary of what this deck is about. It's queer, it's strange, it's a bit creepy sometimes, it's also very beautiful, it feels very raw, there are some explosions of colors, there are some very deep, powerful cards. It definitely has a fantasy twist, but also I feel like it's rooted in nature. And some of the cards are beautiful. I mean, most of the deck is beautiful. Some of the cards are very creepy, but still beautiful. And this has quickly become one of my favorite decks. I got it and I was like, wow, I fell in love hard 
hard hard hard with this deck and I've only had it for like a couple of weeks, three weeks, which is to say a lot. Normally decks have to work hard to gain their spot in the hall of fame, in my hall of fame. But this one, it was like instant love. I backed it because I fell in love with the artwork, but when I got it, something else happened, which is usually... That's what we hope, right? When we get a deck, sometimes you love the artwork, but you, when you get it and you hold it in your hands, the magic doesn't happen. But sometimes it's like in Harry Potter, where the wizard finds the perfect wand and there's that like magical current that goes through both of them and you know, the music starts and suddenly you know that they found the perfect wand. I don't think there's such a thing as a perfect tarot deck and so this is not my perfect tarot deck, but I definitely got <laughs> the magical current holding this deck for the first time and I can't put it down. Don't really want to share it with others yet. I mean, I have filmed my full moon in August collective reading with it because I really couldn't put it down and I've been loving using it. But it's almost right now that I'm enjoying it so much that I, I need to spend a little bit more time with it like that. One-on-one -on -one quality time because it feels very special. I feel like it follows the RWS but mostly it does have its own interpretation. I feel like this deck has some strong shadow vibe. It also has a very Mary L vibe which is one of my favorite tarot decks. If you've been on my channel you'll know I love this deck. This Emperor card is like Odin, right? It's amazing oh my god i'm in love with this deck some some of the cards are a bit confronting the lover's card is very much a confrontational card this is where i said some cards are a little bit creepy this is a level of creepy that i can handle because it's actually very clever look at this lover's card it it really depicts the lover's side more shadow side of codependency feeding of each other um, maybe in ways that it's not necessarily healthy, where you're so consumed with each other that you end up giving too much of yourself and the rest of the world doesn't exist. Like, this is creepy. <laughs> and I'm normally not a fan of creepy. I like quirky creepy, like the zombie tarot, stuff like that. I'm so on board with. And honestly, it's just a few cards that are gory. Most of them are just beautiful fantasy and just really cool. So I really enjoyed this one. I highly recommend you check it out. So this is it. I feel like I've been talking for hours, <laughs> but we got through it. If you've made it this far, thank you so, so much for sticking up with me. If you actually made it this far, let's put a little rose emoji in the comment box below. So I know you've watched it till the end. It will make my day. I hope you had a beautiful month of August. I hope you're feeling healthy, feeling happy, that you're taking care of yourself. And of course, until my next video, as per usual, I am sending you lots and lots of good vibes and keep navigating the waves of your soul. Bye!